Good afternoon. What I want to do today is walk through the setup steps to set up project-driven supply chain. Um, project-driven supply chain is the ability to set up projects and project financials and then um, have supply chain transactions pushed to it. So this can include things like uh, orders can have projects, purchase orders can have projects, um, work orders can have projects, and inventory can be set up at the project level. So there's several steps here to go through. Um, since this is a setup, um, I can't really start from a blank database because I had to go through to create the PowerPoint, which is listed below. Um, so if you have any questions, as always, you know, please reach out to me. So the first thing with project-driven supply chain, it is opt-in. So we do need to opt into it. Um, that can be done a couple places. Normally here you can go change feature opt-in under um, manufacturing and supply chain management. Usually if you go in here, you can find supply chain, project-driven supply chain, sorry, in the opt-ins. Looks like it's gonna take a while. When I went through this the other day, I did not see it here, but usually you'll see it in here and you can just click to enable. If it's not here, then the next option is actually to go into um, My Enterprise and New Features. And you have to search for it here. And you can search for the feature by putting Project Driven and hitting enter. Oh, come on. Oh, I'm sorry, it's under available features. Um, depends on the database that you're, or the version that you're in. So we'll try that again. Project driven, enter. And here it is, project driven supply chain. It came out in 20A. And as you can see here, it's already it's already enabled. And now there's that's the first step. So then after this, um, we're gonna go into setup and maintenance where we'll do the rest of the setup. And so the first thing to do is go into your organizations and take and whatever organizations are going to be project driven. Um, those are the ones that we need to go set up now. So we're going to put inventory organization, search on it, and inventory organizations. Manage, and I'm going to be setting a whoops, 002, which is Atlanta. Here we go. So a couple things you can do here. If you just click on edit, it'll walk you through several screens. This is the first screen, basic information. You click next, and you're gonna get a page with several tabs on it. And what you're looking for is right over here, where it says enable inventory tracking by project. Parenthetically, this is also where you can set up inventory tracking by country meaning I can put countries on inventory. So if I need that, this is also where it's set up. Um, you can also just click on manage organization parameters. It'll go straight to this page. And there's obviously other tabs here that have other functionality. So on the general tab, we've clicked enable inventory tracking by project. So now this org, which is my org 002 or Atlanta, is now going to be tracked by project. The next things we're going to get into are um, expenditure types. Now you have to set up expenditure types to be able to push um, dollars over into projects. So there's a couple things we're going to do expenditure types and then defaults. So expenditure types. And this will bring up both of them that we need. So first we're gonna to go to manage expenditure types. And what we're looking for here, a um, couple things. If you can, okay, um, uh, sort by example or search by example, we can look for supply. 
we should have these supply chain ones set up. They, they probably will be there. If not, you need to set up labor overhead and resources. Um, you can see expenditure categories here, labor overhead and equipment. Um, and as you click on them, there'll be different things down here that need to be set up. Uh, so the other one you need to make sure is set up. You'll notice here there's no um, there's no material category. So we got to make sure material set up in this database. It's set up as material. Enter. And again, the expenditure type classes that you need are inventory, miscellaneous transactions, supplier invoices, and WIP. And each one of these is going to have assigned sets, but it's the same set of assigned sets. That sounds really weird that will go in each one. So if you set up one, it'll be there for all of them. And you need to make sure you have common at a minimum and what other, whatever other um, assignment sets or sets that you have set up in your database, but at least get common because that kind of pushes it to everything else. Whoops, hit the wrong button there. So again, under supply chain as well, like labor, you're going to have miscellaneous transactions and WIP. And each of these will be, you'll need to be able to set these up as well. Um, overhead, non-labor. So overhead, you have burden, inventory. And so it's just the different uh, areas where you're going to be. And these will all be set up in different places, but I'm not going to go into that here. So the next thing that we're going to need to do is um, set up defaults. And so that's why if you search on expenditure types, you can get both of them. So going into defaults, you're going to need to give it a default for labor, material, non-labor, and overhead in supply chain. Which of those ones that we just set up is it going to be for each one of these? And you can name them anything you want. Um, normally, I would have named this supply chain material just to keep it um, um, consistent and easy to use. So we need to set up the defaults. Now the next part is going to be setting up project organization classifications. And this is kind of where things might get a little bit more um, difficult to follow. It's kind of a strange process. So we're going to say manage project organization classifications. Um, and we're going to search for Atlanta because that's the organization I'm trying to set up. And effective date, we'll search. If you haven't set this up before, um, you'll probably just see um, an inventory org and maybe a report establishment org in this list. Um, and so the process we go through will actually assign these expenditure org notices as project and project task org. So that's what we're going to be setting up here. And the um, organization ID is important. This is your organization ID that's in the database that identifies your org. You'll notice that this has the same name, but it has a different org assigned to it. So we got to make sure that when we do this, we get the right org. And so you'll highlight your org your inventory org and hit edit. It's going to take you through this page, but there's four screens here. So the first thing is, yeah, this is the one that we're going to select. And then when this screen opens, if you haven't set it up before, these will all be blank and you'll need to click them all to make sure that we get them all set up. So you want to be able to allow indirect projects, projects for capitalization, projects for billing, and projects as an expenditure organization. If this project for expenditure organization is not set up, it will not accept the expenditures from supply chain that you're trying to send to it. So save and continue. And then the organization tree um, is going to be project hierarchy. Um, and and I'll show you where this is set up in a few minutes. And then, of course, we want, in our world, the division or department um, and an organizational um, hierarchies are set up separately from this. Again, uh, the video here isn't to go into that, but we need to 
pick the organization hierarchy that we want. And then we can submit this to go set all that stuff up. So like I said, this is kind of a more in-depth one, especially as it gets into um, the setup of these that will be set up in other places. So then um, we're going to, and well, let's see, when, when this finishes, we'll click the back arrow here. The project expenditure org and the project task going org will be set up. So from here, we're going to exit out of this. And we're going to go into the organization trees. And again, this is, let's see, organization trees. So this is where the organizations are set up. Um, and the one we're dealing with here is the project organization hierarchy. So these hierarchies, I guess, are going to be set up in other places and set up in maintenance. So this will be done before we actually go in here. Um, and then we have to go through and do a flattening on these. Um, so it takes the HR structures and flattens them out. And if you click on this, both of these will go to the same screen um, and you can schedule the flattening. Right, it'll create a, a um, scheduled process that can run. And that sets it up so that the orgs can now be used for projects. And then if you've updated all this stuff, yeah, this is kind of a known bug that if you click back, it does that. The last thing that's got to be set up or done is run a scheduled process called uh, maintain project organization. So we'll go over here, we'll go into our scheduled processes, and we're going to schedule this process, hopefully. And it's called maintain project organizations. Have out of that for the search. Maintain project organizations. And what this says is maintain organization information and project applications. Run this process after you add organizations, project classification, business units, et cetera, et cetera, to update project organization classification or hierarchy. So this just kind of finishes out the process. And again, there's no real parameters here. You just submit and let it go. So with that, we should now be able to um, get C, uh, projects in, in inventory. So we'll go into inventory management. And also, you will see uh, organization um, fields on customer orders, work orders, maintenance work orders, um, purchase orders as well, so that you can move information by products. So we see manage inventory quantities. Search this. So this is what it does. It'll create this project common. So this is common inventory that's not specifically assigned to any project. And as you add projects and start posting inventory into those projects, you'll start to see all those project names um, within this uh, maintain item quantity. So you can track at any point in time, see any point in time, how much inventory is common and how much inventory is actually associated to a project. So. I um, hope that helps. Um, if you have any questions, obviously let me know. And I will be posting um, a PowerPoint in the description below that will help you uh, walk through these steps. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.